now. Just record it. There's the lady. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, welcome, welcome, welcome everyone to day one of the summer self-care challenge and sale. Whoa, take a deep breath with me, please, because that's going to help me calm down. <sighs> um, a little bit of technical difficulty this morning, but we got it all figured out and we are good to rock and roll. I am Pamela Zimmer. I'm your self-care concierge, and I will be your wonderful host for every morning this week, Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. Pacific. So whether you're here with us uh, on Zoom or you are here um, or you're watching a recording or you're in the Facebook group, we are so, so, so thrilled that you are here. Um, I know that summer can be a crazy busy time for a lot of people and it can also be a time where we get a chance and an opportunity to just step back, take a deep breath, um, regroup ourselves. I don't think there's ever a bad time to learn about and practice self-care. That's my mission. So I will say self-care is important 365 days of the week, no matter what season we're in. Um, it just happens that we are in summer right now. So just real quick, a little bit um, about me and about how this challenge and sale is going to work. Um, so every morning I'm going to go over um, one area of self-care. There are four areas, physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual. And so each day we're going to focus on one of those areas. And I'm going to have a little training for you and then an expert interview. And our guest expert today is Dr. Erin Oaksel, and I will introduce her in a little bit. There is a handout. Hopefully everyone um, has accessed the handout. I will post the link again here in the chat. Um, there are two handouts for today. They are PDFs and they are on a Google Drive for those of you in Zoom. And for those on Facebook, they're just in, in a post um, that you can just go grab and download. So hopefully you can all do that to follow along. And lastly, finally, first, I guess, just a little bit about me. Like, why am I here leading this? Why am I qualified to teach you all about self-care? And so I'm going to give you like the 60 second bio version of me so we can get going on this. Um, I was an architect for 13 years prior to having kids. And when I had our second son, Brayden, four months in, I was diagnosed with severe postpartum depression. And looking back, I realized that I had had it for almost three years prior, starting with when our first son, Zachary, was born. And I just didn't know. And I thought, oh my gosh, this is what motherhood is. This is okay, that's it. Like, why am I not happy? I have everything I asked for. Uh, I always wanted to be a stay-at-home mom like my mom. And so when I got the opportunity to do that, and my husband um, had a job, it was right during the recession. We lost our, our home. My mom had passed away. It just for me was the perfect storm. And my life went into severe depression. That was actually a very profound gift because it allowed me to pivot in my life and take this new direction to becoming your self-care concierge. The biggest lesson I learned out of those six years that I struggled was about self-care and that no one else is going to take care of me except me. And it's beyond just getting a massage or a mani-pedi. It's beyond just taking a spa day because I have to. Self-care is so, so, so much. Self-care in my definition is intentional thoughts or actions to care for your own physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual health. And so that's why this week we're going to dive into those four areas, physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual health. Um, I've become an international speaker, a retreat host, a seven-time best-selling author, um, I'm a corporate director with APL Go, and I am super, super excited and honored that you all would show up for me to share my gift with you this week. So without further ado, um, let's get going. Let's talk about today. We're going to talk about mental self-care. Um, 
And feel free to comment in the chat. Feel free if you're on Facebook watching live. Um, I have it pulled up on, on my phone and I'm gonna try to multitask and monitor, but please give me grace. <laughs> um, so let's talk about mental self-care. Um, mental self-care is about what we are putting into our brains, what we're consuming, information, what we're telling our brains. So if you have your handout printed or if you have it open on um, in a PDF, feel free to follow along or just grab a notebook, a journal, take notes, download the handout later if you can't get to it now. But the first part is who are we surrounding ourselves with? Right? We've all heard the phrase that you are the sum of the five people you hang around the most. Who are you surrounding yourself with? Are you surrounding yourself with people who lift you up, who fill you up, who encourage you, who support you, who have your back no matter what, who are you know fixing your crown when it shifts off a little bit? Who are the people that you're surrounding yourself with? That's important because we absorb their thoughts, we absorb their beliefs, we absorb the way they go about their life, their action and everything, whether we realize it or not, right? And we do the same for other people as well. So the first part of that mental self-care is who are we surrounding ourselves with? And we're going to kind of go back to grade school where it's like who, what, why, where, when, you know, um, we're going to do a little bit of that. So the who, who are you surrounding yourselves with? The second, what are we listening to or watching? How many of us have binged on Netflix or Amazon Prime over this last year, especially during COVID, right? And we're in quarantine and we're like, oh, I can't do what I want to do. I'm just going to binge watch. Well, that's fine. But what are you watching and what are you listening to? Are you listening to a podcast? that is some kind of educational content or uplifting spiritual content? Are you listening to music that makes you feel good? Or are you listening to music that has some lyrics that maybe you don't really want your kids to be listening to? What kind of information are we putting into our head? And what are we letting our eyes see, right? A lot of times, um, there will be a show on Netflix or Amazon Prime. And I admit, like, I love my evening routine after everyone has gone to bed, including my husband. I sit, I have the lights down low, I have a drop in my mouth, um, and I have my feet up, and I'm watching an Amazon Prime show. And I've been really into these period shows of, like, Victorian... Um, England and I'm watching a show about the queen and actually I just finished the show about the queen. So I need another good recommendation. Um, and as I'm scrolling through trying to figure out what I'm watching, I'm watching the trailer of certain things. And there's just some language and some, some actions that I'm like, I don't know that I want to fill that in my head. I don't know that that is going to support me. And yes, that's more entertainment. And so entertainment is fine. I'm not saying don't go to the movies, don't watch a show just to veg out and entertain yourself, but be conscious of what you're watching. Be conscious of what you're listening to. Um, make it be something positive that makes you feel good, that moves you forward, right? Especially if we're struggling in our business or struggling in a relationship, find something that can help us move past that. So what are we listening to or watching? Then the third thing is, why are we doing what we're doing? And this has a lot to do with our goals, our focus, you know, um, are we off task? Are we allowing ourselves to get distracted? Are we procrastinating? Why are we doing what we're doing? And I know a lot of us um, have been asked the questions, what's your, has been, ugh, sorry, I know a lot of us have been asked the question, what is our why? And that can go deeper. We could do a whole day, probably a whole week with Dr. Erin asking us about our why, because she's the queen of that. She's the queen of the, so what, so what, so what, so that yourself, you know, um, but why are we doing what we're doing, right? Are, am I watching an Amazon Prime or a Netflix show um, because I'm escaping reality? No, I'm watching it because 
that's my like relaxation downtime. Would I watch it in the middle of the day? Probably not. Cause that's not going to move me closer towards my goal. That's not going to forward myself. So why are we doing what we're doing? And if we lack focus and concentration, um, we've got a drop for that. Right. Um, <laughs> so why are we doing what we're doing? Know your goals, be focused on them. Even if it's just little chunks at a time, 15 minutes at, at a time of working towards your goal is supporting your mental self-care. Why are we doing what we're doing? The fourth one, where are we spending our time? Again, that kind of ties around with why are we doing what we're doing? Where are we spending our time? Are we spending our time just browsing Facebook, hoping that we're going to feel better? Are we spending our time at the gym or on a walk, exercising? We're going to talk a little bit more about that on um, Wednesday with physical self-care. Where are we spending our time? Are we spending our time on the tasks that are moving us closer to our goal? to our dreams, to our end game, to our purpose on this planet. Because I believe if we, if we don't take care of ourselves, we can't do what we were put on the planet to do. That's the bottom line reason that we practice self-care so that we can do what we were put on the planet to do. So where are we spending our time? And then lastly, how are we talking to ourselves? And you guys, this one is so, so important. Um, and Dr. Aaron's gonna expand a little bit more on this in just a minute. How are we talking to ourselves? What we say to ourselves in here, whether we say it out loud, whether we, you know, verbally say, oh my gosh, you're so stupid. Ugh, I can't believe how ugly you look today. You know, would those be things that we would ever say to our best friend's daughter or son? Absolutely not. So we don't get to say them to ourselves either. How are we talking to ourselves? We should be the most loving and grace-filled people with ourselves. And that might sound selfish to say, oh, you look so beautiful today. Oh, you're so smart. You're so brilliant. You're so amazing. You're so successful. Look at you crushing all your goals. That might sound a little awkward. It might feel awkward. It might feel selfish to say that to yourself. But let me tell you, if you can get in the habit of saying those things to yourself, you're going to start to believe it. You're going to start to live it. You're going to start to match your actions to those words. And you are going to be the most beautiful. You are going to be the most successful. You are going to crush your goals. So how are we talking to ourselves? We all mess up, right? We all have days where we don't want to turn our camera on Zoom because we're not looking 100% in our opinion right? I think every single one of you is absolutely beautiful just the way you are. But sometimes we don't feel like it. But we have to be the example for ourselves, right? We have to be the example for our kids. For those of you who are parents, our children are watching. How are we talking to ourselves? We would never say something mean to our best friend's child. So let's not say it to ourselves, okay? So recap real quick, who are we surrounding ourselves with? What are we listening to or watching? Why are we doing what we're doing? Let's focus on our goals. Where are we spending our time? And how are we talking to ourselves? And yes, Kelly, I am perfectly and wonderfully made. Absolutely, 100%. So I'm going to now um, change gears a little bit and introduce you to the most amazing Dr. Erin Oaksel. And I'm gonna read her bio, her bio um, because otherwise I would just go off for 30 minutes telling you all how amazing she is because she is absolutely amazing. So I'm just gonna read this and just, Erin, you just soak it in. Um, Dr. Erin Oaksel is an award-winning international speaker and trainer, high performance sales and business strategist, psychologist, five-time number one best-selling author and a top producer in a health and wellness company recently rated to be the fifth largest in the world. Dr. Aaron is on mission to set the captives free, free from unworthiness, self-doubt, and perfectionism. She believes bliss is your birthright and your enoughness in the world is not up for discussion. I love that. Her revolutionary AMPT system 
teaches you how to finally close the gap between where you are and where you want to be. Yes. And Dr. Aaron is married to Garth and they have three children, Grace, Emily, and Zachary. And so Dr. Aaron, thank you for being here. Thank you for being the guest expert of the day. Um, Everybody, thank you, yeah. my best friend, Pam Aww. Zimmer and self-care coach. This is so fun. We have so, so much in common. You know, I got to be the woman that you just described through a very similar channel of complete immobilizing depression. And I didn't take care of myself till after I, I figured out I had to save myself, you know, and yeah. So thank you for that. Yes. So you have, um, you have a little statement that you gave me um, and it's your brain can be your best friend and ally in self-care or your worst enemy how to combat negative thinking and build mental strength. And I love that because we, we often don't think about our brains as part of self-care, right? But oftentimes that's like the first place we start because mindset is everything. You know that, right? So most people have probably never considered their thought life to be related to their self-care and to be so important to one's self-care. In fact, most people think of what they do for self-care, not how they think, right? it's the actions, it's not our head. So what does our brain have to do with self-care? Oh, thank you, thank you for that. Um, you know, who can relate to that? Like your brain can be your best friend or can be like the most dangerous neighborhood that you can ever hang out in. I mean, and, and you know, if we think about all the things that we're going to learn how to do this week for ourselves, it's all gonna stem though from what we think about ourselves. And so at its heart, isn't self-care almost related to self-concept, your sense of self, your sense of self-esteem, your sense of worthiness. I'm not going to go and make a boundary for myself if I don't believe I'm worthy of a certain boundary, right? How am I going to know what to say yes or no to if I don't know what it is that I want or believe I'm worthy of. I had this thought this morning, you know, self-care isn't what we do for ourselves; It's who we are to ourself. Self-care is not what we do for ourself. It's who we are to ourself. And so we're going to dive deep into this because I, you know, I don't know if you know this, but all of your thoughts are not, um, um, voluntary. You have a lot of thoughts that come your way that you have not given permission. You, they are unwanted, unwelcome, unfriendly, right? And so what do we do when we're not in complete control? And how do we think? And what do we do when we have these negative thoughts that come our way? But ultimately, I think self-care is about being your greatest ally. And it's a concept in the field of psychology known as self-compassion. And so, yeah, I think it's all about humaning, being a human, how we are being a human and realizing that all the feelings and all the, the whole, you know, the good, the bad, and the ugly are going to show up. And so how we manage those, I think is how we um, practice self-care. Yes. I, I love what you said that it's not about, you know, what we do and it's about how we be, yeah. right? It's about how we be. So Okay, so we have total control over our thoughts. How do we manage them? How do we manage the negative thoughts that come our way that are the unwanted ones, the ones that don't help us in our self-care practice? What do okay. we do, Dr. Aaron? So we don't have control over our negative thoughts. You know that all your thoughts are just, they come to us based on all of the previous programming that's happened in our life. Okay, if I said right now, don't think of a pink elephant, you're all thinking of pink elephant, okay? That's unwanted. If I could say, I'll give you a million dollars by you know, tomorrow to the person who cannot think of an elephant between now and then, you all would fail, okay? You do not have control over every thought that comes your way. That's okay. And sometimes I think that's good news because we can then recognize like, oh, I can have a different relationship with my thought. So if self-care is not about um, not having negative thoughts, it's not about the absence of negative thoughts, it's 
how do we manage those thoughts that come our way? And I want you to manage them instead of them manage you. Doesn't that sound good? So I'm going to give you my four step. I think it's four steps. Um, it's called bless and release method, but it's basically 30 years of psychology, everything in one little system. And it's going to revolutionize your life for the rest of your life. Every negative thought you've ever had. Sound good? Okay. So the first step is I want you to notice your thought. You've heard this before, but the best way I think about it is think about like, this is my microphone. Imagine being a newscaster of your own brain. Oh, she's having the thought that she's never going to make it. Oh, now she's having the thought that she's had that thought for 20 years and it's really annoying. Oh, now she's having the thought that she wants that thought to go away. And now she's having the thought that she's really annoyed that she's having the thought again. And couldn't the thought just go away? Like, okay, could we just be an observer of our thought? I'm having the thought that. That's your first step. I'm having the thought that, okay? Because guess what? Remember, if you don't have full control over those thoughts, it, okay, oh, I'm just having the thought that. I remember when I used to be depressed, whenever I would get frustrated or overwhelmed, I would have some really negative thoughts. And when I learned that I could just notice them like, oh, I'm having that thought. Oh, that thought has just entered the party. Uninvited, unwelcome, annoying. And okay, so the second step is I want you to validate the thought. And this is how you're going to do it. You're going to say it makes perfect sense. I'm having this thought because so write that down. It makes perfect sense. I'm having this thought because. So if I'm having the thought that like, I'll never make it. Okay. That makes perfect sense. I'm having that thought because I never have yet. <laughs> or like, uh, you know, what, whatever the it is like, okay, that kind of makes perfect sense. Or, oh, I'm having that thought it makes perfect sense. I'm having that thought. Cause that's a thought I have for the last 27 years. Whenever I get frustrated, that's the thought that comes my way. It just makes perfect sense. Or if you don't know why it makes perfect sense, you can just insert makes perfect sense. I'm having that thought because I learned that's the way the brain works. And some thoughts are involuntary and sent my way based on my history and past learning. The third step is to thank your brain. Now, this is where we get a little cray cray, right? That sounds a little cray cray, but you're going to thank your brain because the brain's job is to protect you. The brain's job is to protect you from all harm. It is there to protect you from failing, from falling on your face, from embarrassing yourself, from failing once again, from not making it, from not risking things lest you fail, blah, blah, blah. That's its job. It's annoying and helpful at the same time. It's not super helpful when we're going for new things in our life, which we all are because we're on this call. So that's the problem that we have to reconcile whether you're an entrepreneur or you're a growth minded person, which you are, cause you're on this call growth and staying the same and being protected are not super great together. Okay. So we're going to say, thank you brain for trying to protect me from not making it once again. Thank you. Thank you for trying to protect me from falling on my face. Thank you. And then the last step is called the power of the pivot. And this is where you make a new choice based on new decisions, new information, new support you have. This is where you tell your brain, and I'm going to go after it because this time is different. Or, and I'm going to try again because I have a different support system. Or, and I'm a person that's capable of figuring things out. It's a powerful one, you guys. I'm a person capable of figuring things out. So what happens, here's the good news. What happens over time is when you apply this technology and stop fighting your negative thoughts, when you let them in, which we just did, they go away. It's like living in opposite land. When your negative thoughts come knocking on your door, I want you to let them in instead of saying, oh God, not you again. I can't have you. And oh my God, you're louder. You're even louder than last time. And why won't you go away? And what's wrong with me? And why can't I get rid of you? Say, come on in. Oh my gosh, you again? Why does it make perfect sense you're here? Okay, okay, you're trying to protect me or this is what you do. This is what you do when we go and try new big awesome things. I got it, okay. And this is what we're gonna do. And it's like you take that negative thought with you on the adventure. Does that make sense, you guys? Mm -hmm. Amazing, I know, amazing, right? Like, I'll give you one example. Because this is self-care. Self-care is going after what you want in your life and believing you're worthy of it. My whole life, my sister told me I was a horrible storyteller. 
I get paid now to tell stories, you guys, I'm a professional speaker. So you can imagine the first time I hired, um, blocked a room for my first one day live event where I was gonna be speaking for eight hours to everyone that showed up. You can imagine, we're in the car, Garth's driving and my brain is like, abort, abort, what the heck were you thinking, right? So I'm like, okay, oh, you, you're showing up right now. Of course you are. That makes perfect sense. I could potentially make a fool of myself for eight hours and I'm not that woman anymore. I am a great speaker now because I hired coaches that taught me how. I am not, my sister's not in the audience. <laughs> like I was able to tell myself things. So see, that makes the negative thought go down in intensity and frequency. So the thing is you're gonna enjoy what's called neuroplasticity. A lot of you know about this. And over time, the negative thoughts are not gonna bombard you as much. And when they do, you're not gonna believe them as much and they're not gonna be as intense. Isn't that good news? This is self-care. This is radical self-care. How you take care of this thing between your ears, I think is ultimately self-care. Wow. Wow. Okay. We all need a deep breath just after that, right? Bless and release. I hope you guys all took notes. I, I have heard her talk about that multiple times and every time it gets me right. And well, that makes perfect sense. How, why am I having this thought? Right. Um, and take the thought along, like throw it in the backpack with you. Come on, let's go. Let's go do this thought. Um, you just mentioned this concept of radical self-care. And I know that you've also said that sometimes um, in our greatest levels of suffering, when we're struggling the most, we have the opportunity to practice radical self-care. What do you mean by that? So anyone here suffer? Anybody? Anybody? Anyone, anyone have any suffering? Oh, I think it's part of the job description of being a human. Last time I checked, none of us got out of here without suffering. Like I want to be on my tombstone, she suffered well. Like I'm not kind, I'm kind of not kidding. Like I want to suffer well. My greatest prayer to God is don't waste my suffering. What do I mean by that? This is what I mean by that. We are going to be humans that have a human experience. That's what we're showing up here for. We're having these human experiences where it's not always positive. So isn't the reason why we practice self-care to get us ready and prepared for the times when we're being human and life is coming our way? Like that's ultimately what has contributed to my sense of self-esteem and confidence that I could be the woman that could handle what came my way and that it wouldn't do me in. Doesn't that sound good? Like I remember being the woman that if something negative happened to me or when I was depressed, I mean, I would cancel appointments. I would not go into work. I would stay in bed. It's like now it's this challenge for me of how quick can I bounce back? Like, and noticing and recognizing and celebrating myself of, yeah, you did it, man. You cried yourself to sleep, but you got up in the next day and you were like, you bounced back. Like, that's really cool to me. That means I'm flexing, growing, strengthening the muscle of resilience. And isn't that what we're in training for? You know, someone said last week, I was speaking to a group of insurance agents and they said, how did like COVID affect you? And let's be clear, I was crying many, many days during COVID on walks, like existential crisis. I was all there with many of you of what am I gonna do with my life and blah, blah, blah. And at the same time, I had built my muscle of resilience so that I knew how to, I think self-care is knowing how to listen in the suffering mm -hmm. and knowing what questions to ask. The questions we ask dictate what we get, right? So the questions that you train your brain to ask are radically important. So this is a super helpful question. I wonder when it will be revealed to me why I'm going through all of this crap. And I wonder, and I wonder how quickly I will understand why this horrible suffering is happening to me. And I would like it to come as soon as possible. I would like that revelation. But if you're asking that question, there's an understanding and an assumption, if you catch it, that it's there. I wonder when it will be revealed to me 
why I'm going through this. This is going to be really good because this is really bad. This is going to be really good because this is really bad. So you are in training, my friends, for such a time as this. I was in training for such a time as COVID where I had some resilience. So that's why we're training our brains day in and day out to build self-care into it so that we can human well. It's not about escaping negative stuff. That's not what self-care is about. It's how am I gonna react to being human? Yes, I love that. Thank you. And, and I know you and I have talked a lot about this bounce back ability, right? And it's almost like if you can compare it to, you know, going to the gym and working your muscles or whatever, if you have a muscle strain, if you're already strong in that area, you're going to heal a lot faster from that injury or that muscle strain or, you know, broken bone or whatever, if you're fit to begin with. And so self-care is like that for our lives. Mm. If we practice self-care, then that bounce back ability is faster, faster, faster. And we can ask ourselves, like Dr. Aaron just said, I wonder what I'm going to learn from this because there is success and there's learning opportunities, right? There's no failures unless we quit. So Ooh. I wonder what I'm going to learn from this. And the more we practice self-care, the faster we can bounce back from it. Doesn't mean we're going to get through the struggle faster. It just means we have that resiliency. So thank you. Um, Okay, so we hear a lot about the power or the importance of positive thinking. And so am I just supposed to be happy all the time? <laughs> oh, I'm supposed to not laugh at that. Uh <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm not supposed to laugh at that either. So I want you to repeat after me, everyone. Oh, how human of me. And oh, how human of me. And you know, part of being human is showing up for all of it, isn't it? And I think true happiness is this ability to show up for all of it. Don't you? I mean, I think, isn't that what adulting is? Like, I want to learn how to adult. Like, and so it's not about always thinking positive. On the one hand, like I said, when you train your brain to think a certain way, you will. I, I am grateful to say I'm one of the happiest people I know. I was not this person. I have built this brain. I've built this brain. And I say that so that you know that you can too. Like I'm annoyingly happy. <laughs> if I didn't know me, I might be annoyed by me. Um, I have built her and you can too. And so it's not about always thinking positive, but man, when you change the lens, when you strengthen the muscle, it will change the lens. It will change the lens and it's a good way to live. And I want that for all of you. Yeah. We don't have control of everything that happens around us or outside of us, mm -hmm. but we have control of how we respond to that. Mm -hmm. Right. And I, I have some friends that used to be just annoyingly happy all the time. <laughs> and I hated it. I, I was like, God, she's happy over everything. Like, Oh, can she ever just be down and sad and bummed out? And then the more I hung around with her, the more I was like, oh, there's something to that. There's something to that. Yep. Um, so I want to be a millionaire. Um, this year, I'm going to be a millionaire. This year, I will be a millionaire, right? Is that, is that an affirmation? Does that, does that work? Because I know um, that I've had experiences where I've tried them and I've been told to say things like that. I've just been told to say, I am a millionaire or this year I will be a millionaire and it didn't happen. So what am I doing wrong? Help us, help us figure out how do we, how do we create an affirmation that actually works? Oh, I'm so excited to share with you this. So this is your um, little homework assignment for your challenge today is to create an affirmation that will actually work. So let me back it up and remind you that the brain knows when you're telling the truth or a lie. So when I am told to look in the mirror and say, I am a millionaire, my brain says, liar, liar, pants on fire. I have seen your bank account and you are not a millionaire. Like 
or I love everything about my body. Your brain is like, that is not true. That is not true. Or, okay. So that's one way to kind of mess up affirmations. And people just don't know better. We just haven't known better. Okay. So if you've ever felt like I've tried to do affirmations, they don't work, or you end up feeling like a failure, or you end up feeling really disappointed because your dreams didn't come true. If your brain's job is to protect you from feeling that again, you might even say, screw that. I'm not going to dream anymore. I'm not going to keep doing this to myself. That would be the smart thing for a brain to do. So I'm just going to explain where we kind of got it wrong and how we can really use our brain to supercharge our joy and our success and use affirmations that actually work. So that was my first piece of like, it has to be true. And I'm going to teach you how to use words that are true. The second piece is a goal is different than an affirmation. So I was in other network marketing businesses and they would tell me to write like, by this date, I will be this rank. And when it didn't happen, it's like, I must be doing this all wrong. That's a goal. It's good to have goals. Helps you reverse engineer what you should be doing. That is not an affirmation. Okay. Goals are different than affirmations. Both are valuable, totally different. So with affirmations, one, we're going to make them true and we're going to use words that are true. And words that are true can be things like, I am open to receive. I am open to receive a million dollars and I will work hard every day to get there. Like, that's true. I'm open to receive a million dollars. That is true. Right? You see the difference? I am open to learning how to radically love my body. That's true. What's not true is I love every single thing about my body. And if I just say it enough, maybe I'll believe it one day. <laughs> like, like, you know, so <laughs> the words I am open can really help. Another phrase that can really help is I intend I intend to attract a million dollar business and I'm open to receive it. Another thing that can help is to create a positive um, verbiage around it, positive emotions. I'm excited that I am one step closer to earning my million dollars. I'm excited. I am grateful. This is so fun to be. Do you see how they're different? And then um, what can really supercharge it is using present tense. Instead of like Kelly said, I will, it's I am. I am on a mission to set the captives free. And in doing so, I will become a millionaire. Like that, you know, do you see the difference in how to make affirmations that actually work? So I can't wait to hear your affirmations and to see them in our in our group. And, you know, my favorite affirmation of all time and say, I am designing the life of my dreams. It's so, I'm so excited. I am designing the life of my dreams. Someone just posted in the comments. Okay. I am so excited. I am designing the life of my dreams. Um, this is my favorite affirmation that I tell myself a lot. I am grateful for all that I have and open to receive and work hard for all that I desire. Just use what works for you. I'm grateful for all that I have and I'm open to receive and work hard for all that I desire. Okay. Love it. So powerful. I think just changing those few little words, I am open to, right? Mm -hmm. I am open to, and then fill in the blank. Mm -hmm. So powerful. So powerful. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Aaron, for sharing your expertise and your thoughts about mental self-care with us today. I'm just grateful and grateful for all of you for showing up for yourselves. And I challenge you, I really, really challenge you to um, come up with your own positive affirmation and share it, share it in your group, share it in the Facebook group, if that's where you are. Post it in the chat here in Zoom if, if you're there right now. Um, and we have a little bit of time left. We have about you know 14 minutes left. So if anyone has a question, um, Aaron and I would be happy to answer the questions. You can just put it in the chat or 
Um, if you're on Zoom with us here, you can raise your hand. If you're on the Facebook Live, put it in the comments. Um, and just remember that self-care isn't selfish. It is essential. So yes, I love, I approve and accept myself, Marilyn. Absolutely. And um, Kevin and Sarah, I'm going to design the life of my dreams. Yes, love that. So any questions, feel free to just um, an affirmation routine. Do I have an affirmation routine? Um, that's a great question. Dr. Erin, do you have an affirmation routine? So I did when I wasn't great at it. And the thing about habit formation is, you know, when, when you're, when it's not just part of you, then create a habit and a routine for it. So absolutely. I did at the beginning, um, years ago when I was establishing this habit and it would be in the morning or it would be a screensaver on my phone. And then what happens again with neuroplasticity is it becomes just how your brain does things. So it becomes easy, which is, don't we love easy? We love easy. And it just becomes what you do um, and how you think. Great question. Mm -hmm. Great question. Great question. Um, let's see. Do you find you have one affirmation at a time or many affirmations? How often would you say your affirmations change? I'm assuming they're pretty fluid. Kristen, that is a great question. Ooh, I bet everyone's different there. I love that. Um, you can never have too many affirmations, I would think. <laughs> so good. Do what works. So the psychologist in me is a fan of doing what works. Um, it always was how I was trained and I, and we were trained of like, how's that working for you? So asking yourself what's working for me is a super helpful question. And sounds like self-care, doesn't it? Pamela mm -hmm. Zimmer. It does. Like, you gotta do what works for you. Yeah. Right. So like you've totally taught me there's no rules. There's let's design a plan that's individual for people. There are pr success principles that are true, successful, happy people have affirmations, successful, happy people have dream boards and vision boards and visualize and spend a little time every day visualizing their future self. So I will tell you that great question kind of below yours, Kristen, how do you feel about dream boards? Mm -hmm. Super, super helpful. Science says they work, but, and this is what we want to do to supercharge your visualization. You want to actually not visualize. You want to take it to the next level, which is called sensualize, where you are actually experiencing it as if it were happening. And you want to experience your visualizations from inside your body, looking out instead of watching yourself like a movie. So if you want to supercharge it, which we all do and not waste our time, let's just do the best that we can. And so I know how it's going to feel to wake up in my house in Mexico and go to the beach. Like I, I, I go, I do that like every day in my brain. Again, I don't have to create a habit now where I do it. I just do it. And so it's there with me at all times. And, you know, when Pamela said at the beginning, how do you know what to say yes and no to self-care is about, if you have clarity, then you know how to set the boundary because you're living in this constant state of, I know exactly what I'm building. And so I will literally say, I will run all of my decisions by, does it get me closer to Mexico? And that's just my example, but insert your why, like, does it get me closer to not having to run my decisions by my money? Does it get me closer to not having to run my decisions by my money? And one thing I really learned, I wanna share this because um, it was so powerful. One thing to ask yourself when you're saying, should I say yes or no to something is not whether it would be good, uh, whether you would be good at it, but would it be good for you? So Isn't good. Powerful. So I was asked to be a network director of some networking group years ago, and it was like this great um, ego booster. And I was like, this is amazing. And a friend of mine said, would you be good at it? And I was like, I think I would. I think I'd be good at it. And then she said, but would it be good for you? And I was like, no, like, no, it'd be a time suck. And it would like, I would be good at it, but it wouldn't be good for me. I am the queen of no self-care. You will hear this from the top performers. The skill you need to learn the most in self-care, I believe is saying no. Say no. What you say yes to and no to. I, and that only comes through clarity. So our hope for you this week is that you have crystal clear clarity about who you want to be and where you want to go and what you want to create. And then you have freedom, my friends. Yeah. 
Yeah, clarity is is so um, it's something that we all should be striving for all the time and things change right like clarity shifts as we as we shift in our life or in our goals or our business grows or whatever. Um, our clarity is going to shift because new things are going to come at us, so you have to give yourself permission to know what you want first off right? Permission is a big word in my, in my book. Like everything I do is based on permission, permission to know what you want. Right. Uh, and then permission to allow yourself time to visualize that, to do that sensual visualization, visualization and feeling like feel, how is it going to be Aaron for you to be in your home in Mexico, having your coffee, sitting out on your patio, overlooking the ocean, um, while you're sitting next to me chatting, because right. I'm there too. <laughs> are. We talked about it last right. night. Like, and then Pamela comes down and we whip out the picnic. I mean, we do, we just do this. <laughs> this is what we do. Did you know that when you create a visualization, your brain creates a snapshot of it that then becomes a memory that then your brain is trying to get to? Isn't that amazing? It's why your brain is your best friend in business and in life and in goal setting. It doesn't know how not to do it. The brain is like, I guess we're going to Mexico. What do we need to do? And it's just like looking for ways to get to Mexico. Like it doesn't know how to not do that, which I think is so amazing. So amazing. So amazing. So let me, let me ask you this. I'm going to go on like a tiny, tiny little tangent, but like, what do you do when you're, you have so many things happening, right? And there are new challenges and opportunities coming at you. How do you stay focused? What do you what do you use? Like what's a tool or something that you use to help you stay focused and concentrate? And like, this is the one thing. Well, I want to hear what you all think in the chat room on this, but normally you would hear someone say, you got to grow the muscle of discipline. And I want to teach you that you don't need to rely on discipline really at all. If you have radical clarity. Wouldn't it be nice to not have to depend on discipline every single day? Wouldn't it be nice to not have to depend on motivation? So if you strengthen this muscle of crystal clear and, and clarity does not get bestowed on some people's laps and others, others. you go and choose to be clear. You, you choose to grapple, grapple with clarity. Get in the arena and grapple. And when you have clarity, I don't have to wake up and like, are we going to do what we said we're going to do? I don't have to dig into discipline. I don't have to dig into motivation. So it makes me appear insanely productive, but I'm just insanely clear. So give yourself the gift of insane clarity. You guys, I've said no to so many things this year and it's been brutally difficult. <laughs> And look at what's happening in our lives with this business and it, okay, become the queens and kings of no's and the kings and queens of clarity. And you will not have to rely so much on motivation and discipline. Yeah. I love that Becky. Um, yeah. Motivation is easy when you're doing <laughs> something you love. Right. But it's not, it doesn't last. Aaron, Dr. Aaron, you've taught me that motivation doesn't last. So motivation is actually for the uninspired. So motive, what I mean by that is motivation is different than inspiration. So motivation is this outward like carrot that you're trying to get and inspiration comes from inside. So when you find your inspiration, that's because you're inspired by your clarity, your mission. That's why my business is called the psychology of mission. Mission, yes, yes, you need inspiration. Yes, awesome. Well, any last parting words or thoughts or nuggets of wisdom that you want to share with us around mental self-care as we wrap up today and challenge everyone to go write their own affirmation and share it with us? Well, sure. If you're asking, okay, so <laughs> I, I am you, asking, I want you all to understand this, this thing that I say that bliss is your birthright. And what do I mean by that? I want you to imagine going to the baby nursery in a hospital and looking at all the babies laying there and they're all brand new and they're perfect and beautiful. You would never go up to one of them and be like, you get like 60% of the good stuff in life and you're worthy of 
like one vacation, but you're worthy of all the vacations. And you're, so if there's any negative thoughts that ever come your way about yourself or doubts of, am I worthy? Or is it ever going to happen for me? Or all the things we ask, I want you to understand that that was learned. That if it's true that your worth on the planet was established at birth, then it's no longer up for grabs. And then you can ask yourself, I wonder how I would work and play and live and love if my worth on the planet were not up for grabs. So I just want you to keep that in your back pocket. If it ever sinks in, because it will screw, it will, it will sneak in again that you, and you will forget your worth on the planet was established at birth. You will forget it. And your enoughness will be up for grabs. When you forget, you say, oh, I remember that that's not up for grabs. What other question could I ask myself? Okay. Bliss is our birthright. Thank you, Pamela. I love you. Thank you everyone for showing up for yourselves. Thank you so much, Dr. Aaron. And again, thank you all for being here, not for us, but for you. Yes. Um, and we will see you tomorrow where we get to be with the incredible Julie Martin for emotional self-care. Um, if you are watching the replay, share with the person who invited you to this, what your affirmation is. Um, I would love to be able to support you. We all would love to be able to support you. So just share and um, have a wonderful, beautiful day. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Take care. Bye. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Thanks.